Hey, welcome everyone. Welcome to today's live stream. As always, before I begin today's live stream, let me know in the chat window that you can hear me okay, and we can go ahead and begin today's live stream. Hopefully I have my mic situation under control this time. I know live stream, the previous live stream, we had some technical issues with my audio, but hopefully that's been fixed today. So just let me know in the chat window if you can hear me okay, and we're good to go. Yes, so we always have recordings of these live streams available on our YouTube channel. So after the class, it's going to be available right away on our YouTube channel. You'll be able to watch this session at a later time. Okay. Hopefully you guys can recognize me. I did get a haircut yesterday. Okay. So uh, I took a look at some of the previous live streams before, and I noticed that my bangs were stretching all the way across my face, which is not the best look. Um, so number one, you're here to learn about Caspio, and then number two, very close second, you got to let me know in the chat, win chat window if my uh, grooming is not up to par, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> very important, close second, okay? All right, let's, let's see what we're going to learn about today in our topic. We're going to talk about uh, Google Map integration, okay? I had to uh, relearn some of the things myself when it comes to Google Map integration because... Uh, I haven't done this in a long time, so a couple of things that I learned from Google's side when you're generating the API key, uh, it's no longer free. Unfortunately, you have to provide your billing info to Google in order for it to work the way it's supposed to. Uh, now, the request that you make with the API key, um, it's free up until a certain point, but then when you reach that threshold, uh, if you exceed the number of calls that you can make, then they're going to charge you a small monthly fee. Okay, so that's number one. Also, number two, let me actually show you on my end here. Um, when you create your API key here, okay, in the overview screen, this is all on the Google side, you're going to have to provide your billing info, okay, and under credentials, you're going to generate your API key, and then you can click inside it, and I have a recommendation here for you guys is to create some restrictions to your API key so that nobody else can use that same API key for their projects, okay? So my recommendation is to make it unique to your own uh, URL domain, your own website. The API key that I'm using today is Caspio's API key, so it only works on Caspio's domain, and we also have a few other restrictions, so that even if you guys try to use today's API key, it won't work unless it's a .caspio.com domain, okay? Um, so yeah, make sure you have your billing info provided to Google, uh, you can enable some restrictions, and then inside the API key itself, I've also enabled, let me show you. Um, where was it? It was on the dashboard, I believe. Let me see. So I have enabled the uh, geocoding API, geolocation API, and Maps JS API. Okay, so these are my enabled APIs, and these are the, uh, the additional APIs that Google provides. Okay, so if you wish to enable some of these, like for example, to have the street view, you can click on it, and then just enable it, and then you're going to be able to see it here available in the list of all of the other APIs. Okay, so what are we going to learn how to do today? So today, again, as I mentioned, we're going to place this Google map above the search form. We're going to plot some uh, businesses on our map. Uh, using coordinates long and lat, um, and then we're going to learn how to generate those coordinates automatically using a Caspio submission form. So when you submit the form and you provide the address, uh, in our table we can automatically generate the long and lat, longitude and latitude. Uh, I recommend that you use the coordinates for your plotting as well on the map because it's much faster performance-wise. You can still use the address if you'd like with the Google map. However, there's going to be a slight, maybe half a second delay when the pins are popping up on the map. So you might see one, two, three, and then eventually all the pins will plot themselves onto a map. But if you're using geocode location like long and lat, all of those locations will pop up instantly. So when you load the map, let me just refresh the browser, you will see how all the maps, all the pinpoints, or all the points here, pins automatically populated onto the map. Okay. So that's what we're going to learn today. So let's uh, try to do this together. Let me go into my account. Let's set up a new app. Start as a blank, te uh, blank template, and we're going to call this Google Map Integration. And we're going to hit Finish. Let's open it. 
Let's go to tables. And the first thing we're going to create is our table. And we're going to follow this tutorial that we have in our knowledge base. Generate geolocation coordinates from submission forms. These are the important fields that we're going to need. And then we're going to follow this tutorial. We're going to use the script. We're going to customize the script slightly. And then we're going to continue reading the instructions or where we need to place additional info into our data page. It's pretty cool, especially if you're asking, let's say you're creating an application where you want to collect surveys or maybe business information, depending on the use case or real estate properties. Once they provide the address info, which are required fields, in our table, we're going to be able to automatically generate the long and lat. And then we can use that information when we plot the pins onto a map. All right, let's go to our table. Let's build it. And let's have business ID as the very first field. Always add your primary key first. Random ID. Let's have business name, maybe business type. And then let's see what information we need. Definitely need the address info. Address, city, state, zip. And then we're going to have long and lat for longitude and latitude. Okay. Let me take a look at what other information we need to keep in mind here. So we have, uh, these are going to be eventually hidden fields on the submission form. Okay, everything else looks good. Obviously, you can add other fields to your table if needed, depending on what information you're collecting. But as far as my table, I think that's all that we need. We're going to save the table now, and let's give it a name. So let's call this demo TBL business info. So let me take a look at my question here. If we already have the addresses in with long and lat populated, yeah, that's perfect. So you're almost, uh, you don't need to do this if you already have that information in your table. Uh, in just a moment, you'll see how we can connect our Google map with that information that you have in your table so that you can plot all of those addresses onto the map, okay? Um, there are a lot of databases that you can download. Um, from the web that are completely free. So you can download that info, import that into your account. But now we're just looking at how we can generate the long and lat automatically, which is pretty cool uh, if you don't have that information in your table. So let's go to data pages and let's build the form. New data page, we're gonna use submission form. We're gonna hit next. And then I only have one table. So let's select it and let's call this uh, create a business profile, I don't know. Something random. I'm going to use my Caspian style English localization. We're going to hit next. Let's move all of the fields to the right. Hit next. Just going to create some spacing here. My label, business name. I'm going to make all of my fields required. Okay, so required, business type. That's going to be a required field. Let's also have a drop down here. And we'll say select, delete the value. And then we're going to say maybe restaurant. Let's say grocery store. And what was the last one that I had? Restaurant, grocery store. Now let me take a look at my live example. I had one more. Movie theater. Okay. And movie theater. Okay. So my address field is going to be required. Same thing with city, state. Just going to create a quick drop down here using custom values. Select state. You can also have this be a lookup table if you'd like. You guys already know that. So let's have California. Let's have New York. And let's maybe have uh, Nevada. So that's a required field. Zip code is also going to be a required field. And then long and lat are going to be hidden fields. So let's make them both hidden. That doesn't need to be displayed on the form because in my table, that information is going to be captured once the form is submitted. So let's take a look at our tutorial. So I made both of my long and lat fields hidden, as you can see. Okay, and I'm just going to copy the script that's provided for me. Let's copy that. And we just need to read the instructions. So we need to place the script in the footer section. So back in Caspio, we're going to add header and footer. Okay, and in the footer section, it asks me to disable the toolbar. So we go to the advanced tab, disable that, and paste the Caspio code. Now, a couple of modifications that I need to make here inside the script, you will notice 
Then I need to change my fields for lat and long because my fields are called long and lat. So I just need to rename that to lat. Okay, very simple. And then this to long because it needs to follow the same naming convention as in the table. You'll see this in capital, in caps. You will see data page app key. So what we need to do, I'm going to quickly save my changes here. Click on properties and grab my app key. So let's grab that information as well. Copy it edit and quickly go back to the script and here at the top we're going to replace that with that okay let's see anything else that we need to modify here I don't think so uh, just make sure you follow the same naming with the address city state and zip all of my names are the same I don't need to make any more modifications and the final thing that we need to do on the submission form is place this code which you can place directly above your form uh, inside the web page or you can place it inside uh, the header of the data page which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to copy this in my header section I'm going to disable once again the toolbar paste that up here and now I need to replace Google Maps API key with the actual key that's generated from Google. Okay, In your account you're going to find it under credentials and you can just copy it like this, copy API key, or you can go inside it, and it should be up here. You can just copy that and go back to your account. Now, I'm going to use a different API key today. Let me copy that back in my account, and just everything after the equal sign, we're going to replace with that API key. So now, if everything goes well, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes, once I submit the form in the table, it'll automatically give me the long and lat. So let's try it. Let's click finish. Let's deploy the form. Grab our URL. All right, and we are going to now replace that with the submission form. So let's give it a try. Let's say um, business name. Let's let's find a restaurant in California very quickly. So how about in Sacramento? Sacramento restaurant. So how about we grab the kitchen restaurant. Okay, so that's the name of the restaurant. We're going to copy that title. And I also had the address down here too. So let's come back here, provide that. That's going to be a restaurant. And now the address is 225 Hurley Way, Sacramento, California, 95825. Okay. 95825. That's going to be Sacramento. State California. Am I using a different form? Hold on one second. Preview. Okay, so I thought I was using my form. Let me deploy that. Let me grab the URL. Copy it. Oh, I used a different API. Okay, I used a different URL. My apologies. Let me go back here. Sorry about that. Um, let's copy that one more time. My apologies for the delay. Let's copy that. By the way, today's live stream is more than likely not going to take the full hour. Uh, we're going to take a look at how we can customize uh, things on the map itself. Okay, so that's going to be a restaurant address. I don't have it saved, so let me come back here. Grab that info, 95825. Just trying to remember that. I thought I was copying that information here. What's going on here? I'm confusing myself a little bit. Let me grab my name one more time. Am I populating that information into a different form? Let me copy that. Okay, there we go. 95825, California City, Sacramento. Let me spell that with an A. There we go. And let's hit Submit. Okay, so this is required. Let's make sure that's a restaurant. Hit Submit. Okay, your submission was successful. Let's go into our table and let's hope that inside a table we have generated the long and lat. And we did. Okay, so you can see just with a, with a couple of minutes, if I follow that tutorial exactly how it is in the how-to, uh, now we have the long and lat. And I recommend that you, when you're plotting your pins on a map, that you use the long and lat because it's so much faster to plot that information onto a map. You can still use the address, but as I mentioned before, 
there's going to be a half a second delay. So when you're plotting those pins onto a map, you're going to see that they pop up one at a time. And eventually all of the pins will plot, but with the geocode location, it's instant. Even if you have 10,000 restaurants or grocery stores, they will all populate right away. Okay, so now what we're going to do is figure out how we can connect our Google map uh, with our table. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a data page, just a uh, simple report that allows me to view all of the restaurants. So I'm going to use a tabular format, hit next. Again, same table. Let's call this view uh, results, something simple. Hit next. Let's have a search form and let's have the results appear underneath the search form and display the results on the initial load. Let's search based on the business name and business type. Uh, I'm going to keep them both as contains, even though I can modify that to have a drop down or a list box, but just to speed things up a little bit, we are going to just have simple contains criteria. On the results page, let's include the business name, business type, and you can include other fields if you'd like as well. I don't think I need to display the long and lat on my results page. Okay, now I'm going to have the ability to edit. Let's keep that the way it is. Uh, let's just change the label to have a space. And we're also going to include the details page, and in the details page, we're going to include all of the same info. And click finish. So there's my report. It doesn't have the map yet, so let's deploy it. Let's grab the URL, copy it, and let's put that... Let's actually put that right here. Okay, I only have one entry, but later on we'll add a few more so that you can see how we can plot different pins uh, onto the map. The next step is to find a tutorial on our how-to on how to do a map mashup integration. So let's go to howto.calspiel.com and let's look for map mashup. It's going to be the very first link. Click on that. And now we just need to follow the tutorial here in order to connect to our map. Okay. To configure your map, you need to go to this, you need to click on this link. Okay. And then you'll see here, when you get to a certain point, it's going to ask you to provide a Google Map API key. You can click on this link here to go to Google in order to generate that API key. But let's click on this link for now. And now I need to provide my Caspio URL. To get that Caspio URL, just go back to your account, click on account, and then click on settings. And then here's the Caspio integration URL. So we copy this link. Okay. Let's go back to our wizard, paste that link, hit continue. It's still loading. Hang on just for a second. All right. And now we need to basically configure all of the settings for our map mashup. Okay. So with the map view, you can do classic, you can do satellite view, hybrid or terrain. You can also by default change the, uh, the width and height of your map. Uh, usually what I like to do is just keep it as is. Later on, you can come back here and make further modifications if you need to. But for the most part, I'll keep everything the way it is. I'm not going to make any changes here because, again, you can always modify the code that's generated by Caspio to make all of these changes at a later time. So that's why I don't really worry about this initially. I just keep everything the way it is. I'll hit Next. Oh, So here's where you need to provide that API key. Okay, So this is the one that I'm going to use today. Okay, We're going to hit Next. And now you need to find that data page that you created in Caspi, that you're trying to link your map to. And let me just remember what I called my data page. So in my account here, uh, let's go to my data pages, and I call that report very simple view results. Why don't I, yeah, let's just call it view results. And let's find everything that starts with the V. Here it is. Oop, not that one. View results. So that's the name of my data page. So you need to link to that data page. Okay, we're going to hit finish. Well, let's hit add. And now you're going to set up all of your uh, information. If you didn't have the long and lat, okay, you, again, you can still use this way. Okay, you can use the address fields to plot all of your pins. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to use the long and lat, but like I said before, twice already, it's much faster. 
if you're using the long ELAD for your geocode fields. Okay. Next up, you can use the marker. You can choose a color if you'd like. Let's go with blue. Okay. You can also do a custom URL. So if you want to replace this pin with something else, you can just provide a custom URL and you can have your own personalized image if you'd like. Um, and then again, it's a very fairly simple instructions here, you know, enable interactive show and hide markers options. You can enable map, map it to zoom marker. Um, so when you click on it, it will basically zoom on that address where you are on the map. And I recommend that you can just play around with these even later on after you've connected your map initially. Uh, let's show the map on the details page. Uh, I'm not going to hide the map on the search form because my results page, if you notice, I have the search and the results on the same view. I want to be able to display my map right above my search form. So I don't want to hide my map. But if I had the search form by itself and then the results page on a new page, then I would hide it from the search form and only include my map on the results page. Um, you can also enable different markers based on criteria, which is pretty cool if you have um, like in my example, we have a business type. Okay, we have restaurants, we have movie theaters, and we have grocery stores. I could have a different pin based on each one of those criteria that I have in my table, those categories. So maybe restaurants can be blue, grocery stores can be yellow, and movie theaters can be green. Or you can use an icon for each category, your own custom URL. Okay, but we're going to keep things, keep things simple today. Once you're done making all of your modifications, you're going to hit finish here. And if you look at the code that Caspio provides, even when you paste this code into your web page or back inside Caspio, depending on where you paste the code, you can always change the width and height of your map. You can enable auto zoom or disable it by simply changing the Y to an N. Uh, you can change the zoom level by modifying these numbers here that you see. Okay, you can show the traffic layer by changing N to a Y. Okay, so now we just need to follow the instructions. Okay, very simple. Okay, so what we need to do is copy the script. All right, and it's asking copy the following code snippet and paste it into your web page above any data page deployment code. So if you're using the embed deployment method and you paste your Caspio code, you're going to put this script right above your embed code. Okay, but I'm actually going to paste this code into the header of my data page. So you can also use the same code in the data page directly since I'm not embedding anything into a web page today. So let me edit my data page. And like I said, I want that map to appear directly above my search form. So I'm going to add my header and footer, disable my toolbar, and paste the Caspio code just like that. And you can always come back here. And like I said, you can always make these modifications later. And I'll show you a few in just a moment. Let's come back here. Let's scroll down a little bit. Next, if you want this to appear in the results page, paste this code into your results page. So let's go ahead and copy that. We definitely need to paste this into the results page, okay? So I want the map to appear above the search form, but you still need to paste this code into your results page because when you click on the pin, it needs to open up that bubble to show you the address fields that you see here inside the bubble when the pin is clicked on. So we're gonna go back to our account Go to our results page and using an HTML block, we're going to move this all the way down. Once again, disable the toolbar and paste that code for the results page. So this is also needed. And the final one that we have is for the details page. So we're going to copy this. And I don't have to read this. I can see configure details page fields. That's where I need to go. We're going to hit next just a few times here. And once again, using an HTML block, we're going to move that down. Disable and paste that. So if everything goes well, if everything went well, we're going to hit finish here. We're going to come back here. We're going to reload this page and I should be able to see that map right above. And it's going to zoom in on that address. You can also map it here like that. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little bit about customization, how you can actually modify this data inside the bubble, because I don't, want, I don't like the way this data is displayed. I have my you know, uh, state, city, zip, and then I have my address. Let's reverse that. Let's put the address first. Let's make it bold. And let's put all the other information to appear like an actual address. Okay, So that's what we're going to do. So let's go back into our data page, click Edit. 
And hopefully you guys attended my previous live streams on uh, HTML and CSS tips and tricks. We're going to use some basic HTML here to customize the look and feel of that bubble. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is take my address field. I'm going to copy that. I don't want that to appear at the very end, so I'm going to copy and delete that. I want to appear at the very beginning, like this. Okay, I want to put my address uh, by itself. Okay, so I'm going to add a line break here to put the other information underneath the address. Okay, so I want the city, state, and zip to be in the same row. So we're going to take the city, which usually goes before the state. I'm going to put that to the left of the state field. I no longer need the city, so let's remove that field. Okay, I'm going to put a comma here after my city. So city, state, and then zip is going to be right after my um, state field. Okay, very simple. So address will be by itself. We have a line break here, and then we have city, state, and zip in the same row. What if you want to display the business name inside the bubble as well? Well, you can click here and insert the field called business name, like that. Now you want the business name to be in its own row, so you're going to add one more line break to put the address field underneath the business name. But I want the business name to appear in strong text, like bold. Okay, so we're going to put a very simple bold tag here, like this, and then we're going to close that to wrap our business name. Let's see what we've done. Let's click Finish. Let's come back to our results page, refresh, and when you click inside the bubble, you're going to see what that looks like. Now the business name is in bold by itself. We have the address directly underneath, and you have the city, state, and zip underneath the address field. But just a simple modification inside that um, HTML block, you can customize the look and feel of this. What if I wanted to, when I click on this link, uh, when I click on the business name, to actually take me to the website of that business? Hopefully they have, uh, so this is Kitchen Restaurant. Let me just grab the URL to their uh, website. So the Kitchen Restaurant in Sacramento. Sacramento. Yes, they do. Perfect. So let's grab this URL. I'm just going to put this inside my notepad here to the, to the left, just in case I, uh, I'm going to need that uh, later on. So one thing that I've done before, I go directly into my table, and I will provide a business URL. Okay, and I'm going to move that up. Now, on the submission form, I could have included that field so that the business provides the URL uh, to their, to their uh, website. Okay, so this field will actually be on my submission form uh, when I first deploy it. But I didn't include that, so let's just include it now. Let's save the table, and let's provide the URL to that restaurant. Okay, like that. So now I want when people click on the business name to take me to this URL. And here's how we do that. Let's go back to data pages. We're going to edit our results page, and let's go to our HTML block. Okay, so I need people to click on this text, okay, and I need to wrap that text inside an href, which creates a hyperlink for me. So we're going to, very simple, we're going to create a hyperlink, href, equals, and then in between the quotes here, we're going to include that field that has the URL in it. So this is the business URL, okay? It's just a field, but, you know, behind the scenes, it's the actual URL, all right? Now, we want, when people click on that text, I want to open up a new tab. I don't want to get away from my website. Okay, I need to open up in a new tab to go to that URL. So to open up a new tab, you're going to use target equals in parentheses underscore blank. This is just a code that you need to use if you want to open up a new tab. And you can Google this very simple. It's very simple. So if you just go to google.com and you look for uh, HTML open up new tab. Okay, this is what you need to use. Target equals in quotes underscore blank. And in just a second, you will see what that looks like. Let me complete this. So we're going to close our URL, and then this is the business name that they're going to click on, and then we just need to close our A tag. All right, let's try it. Let's hit finish to save. Let us reload. Oh, I'm using it. That's the wrong one. Hold on a second. Where is the one that we're using today? Here it is. Refresh. 
I can zoom out a little bit more so it's not zoomed in so much. You know, you can always click here if you'd like. You can actually zoom in just to maybe the street level, okay, or just the city level. So you have you have a, a lot of uh, flexibility in terms of what zoom level you actually go into. But anyway, when I click inside the pin now, this is a, this should be a clickable link, but it's not. Maybe I need to refresh. Okay, let's see what I did wrong. Let's go back here. Strange, I thought I saved my changes. Oh, well, there you go. There's a, a slight error in my code, so I need to put a space here in between href. Okay, and while I'm here, let me make sure I don't have any more mistakes. I don't want to have to come back here again. So we have the URL in between the quotes, target equals underscore blank. That looks good. Close the A tag. It should work the way it's supposed to now. So let's reload. And I can already tell that it's going to work. So now when I click on that text, you can see how it opens up a new tab and it takes me to the URL of that business or their, their website. And the same thing can be copied to all of the other entries in the table. So if you have different businesses, you have uh, movie theaters and they provide the URL to their uh, website, people are going to be able to click on that. Now let's see how we can modify. I don't like that it's actually zooming in directly inside so close. Uh, I, don't, I, I usually like to zoom in a little bit, out a little bit so I can see more information. So let me fix that. Let's see how we can do that. Let's edit. And let's go to the header section in our search form so that you can see how we can modify the zoom level. All right. So the results page, let's see what happens if I change the three to 11. Sometimes you have to play around with it to see what zoom level you actually like. So let me finish here and let me see what happens. Hopefully that's going to work the way I want. Okay, it didn't. Let me see what it looks like on the details page. Okay, so on the details page it's actually the city level and then on the results page it's still zooming in a little bit too much for my liking so I need to see why it's doing that uh, I'll have to check because it might be a little bit different if you put it on the search form compared to the results page I think it's not recognizing it because I have it on the search form if I had it on the results page I think it would recognize it but because I have it on the search form, I need to figure out why and how I can um, zoom out to the city level or maybe just the street level. So I'll have to play around with that later on offline to figure out. If you guys are interested in knowing how that's done and what I need to change, let me know. And I'll be happy to provide that solution for you. But for now, let's keep it the way it is. I know that if I change the details it'll work correctly because the map is on the details page. So if I change this to 25, let's just say something drastic and I click finish, let me see what happens. Let's refresh and go to the details page. You can see how it's zoomed in. So the higher number means it's gonna zoom in more. The lower number means it's gonna zoom out, I guess. Okay, so let me revert back to what I had before here on the details page. So I actually liked 11 here, okay? So it recognized that, but it's looking for the results page, not the search form, unfortunately. I need to figure out how we can change the zoom level on the search form. All right, a couple of more modifications that you can enable here. You can enable a traffic layer if you'd like. So you can change from this, from N to a Y, click finish. Uh, let's refresh and let's zoom out. And now you can see the traffic layer, okay? So it just adds that layer on top of your map. Let me come back here. Let's see what else we can modify. Just for fun. You can change the width of the map. Let's say you change the height to be in 500 pixels, and then maybe the width can be in 1800. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now the map is much wider and it's not as tall. Okay, so we can zoom out. 
And the last thing that we'll look at today on today's live stream is let's, ma let's make one more submission via the form that we have created today. Is it this one? Yep, it's this one. Let me just refresh it. All right, let's make one more submission for the state of California. Okay, so we'll look, find another uh, another restaurant here. So, uh, how about how about um, Los Angeles restaurants? Okay, we're gonna look at this one here, and let's take a look at this deli place. Okay, so we're gonna grab the address. That's North Hollywood nine one six zero six. So, let's just call it a deli. 91606 uh, address we have and that's going to be in California and I believe the city is LA right the city is uh, North Hollywood which is close to where I used to live okay let's put our city in let's make sure this is a restaurant and yeah so if I had a field for them to provide the web URL to their uh, website we will be able to capture that information here as well. We're going to hit submit. All right, let's reload our map. We should have two entries now. And you can see how the map, if the map is plotting um, multiple pins, it's going to zoom out automatically so to show you all of those pins. But you can also force to only zoom in on a specific area that you want so you don't have to see all of the pins. Okay, uh, here I can map it, the deli. Um, I can map the other one to go directly to it, and it should work the way it's supposed to now. But on the initial load, when you load the, uh, the map, uh, if you only have one pin, the chances of having one pin, one pin are very low. Okay, Usually you're going to have multiple pins, and it's automatically going to zoom out to show you all of those pins. Okay. It's making me hungry. Yeah, it's making me hungry too. <laughs> I haven't had any breakfast yet. Usually for my live streams, I'm running on coffee. Um, I usually have a cup of coffee right before the live stream, just a few minutes before so that I can, you know, be um, awake, you know, for the live stream. Not that I'm not, but, you know, I, I always like to have coffee. Obviously, we know uh, that it wakes us up. Uh, but let me see if you guys have any questions. Um, hopefully... You guys see how easy it is to integrate to Google Map. We're not going to go beyond this. Um, it takes a little bit of going back and forth on the code to customize what you would like to have displayed on the map itself. But you can also use the configuration screen. So even when you get to this page, right, where, you, where Caspio generates the code for you, you can always go back and continue modifying if you'd like to use the WYSIWYG tool that we provide, as opposed to modifying the code itself. Okay. So once you make additional changes, you can click Finish, and then Caspi is going to generate a new code for you that you can use in, inside the web page or inside the data page. Okay. Uh, let me take a look to see if there's any more feedback comments coming in. Please share the website link. Do you want the link to this page, VR? Let me know if this is the link that you want. Just let me know in the chat window if this is the link that you're looking for so that you can test it out and play around with the... Thanks, Peter. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you so much. Next Monday, we're going to do triggers. So we're going to look at some popular examples of triggers. We're going to look at about five of them and how you can use them in your applications. Okay. Uh, one question only. In the beginning of the uh, integration, you could... You copied your very own Google API key into the data page script. Correct. Yeah, so I'm using Caspio's Google API. Caspio has its own Google API that only works on Caspio's domain, okay, um, for obvious reasons. We don't want somebody else to take that API key and use it in their applications because it's not going to work unless it's a .caspio.com domain. And we have a few other restrictions um, that we are enforcing on that API so that the key can't be copied and used somewhere else. Okay. Is this visible then in the deployment? Can someone intercept or somehow hidden from the public? So this will be actually visible when you deploy it. So if you use that code in the data page, like I did today, and you deploy the data page to your website, it's going to be visible. You're going to be able to see the map. But you can also, if you're using the embed deployment method, 
you can put this generated code right above the embed code. So when you paste the embed code, right above it, you're going to paste the Caspio generated code as well. So you have both options, okay, on where you deploy the code. If that's what you meant by deployment, can someone intercept or somehow hidden from the public? Um, it's going to be visible as long as you make it visible, okay? And by intercept, I don't know if you mean intercepting the API key. That's why when you get your own API key from Google, make sure you set the restriction just for your own domain. So if your domain is peter.website.com, inside Google, when you create that API, you can set that restriction to only work with .peter.com domain. So nobody else can use it in their domain. Okay. Nice, very straightforward. Do you know if there's a demo specifically for consuming REST APIs? No, but maybe we can do a class in the future on that session, on, on that topic as well. I think that'll be a very useful topic for people to see the capabilities. I did a live stream a few weeks ago on Zapier and how you can use Zapier to integrate Caspio with other third-party solutions, which is a much easier way than having to write your own API. Because Zapier's to APIs is what Caspio's to building applications. They have a very simple point and click interface where you can, with just a few clicks, you can connect Caspio to, let's say, MailChimp or Google Sheets to Caspio, and then you can send data back and forth using Zapier. So if you go back to our previous live streams that are recorded, uh, you're going to be able to find a Zapier video. And I showed, I showed people how to use, uh, how to connect Caspio to Slack. Okay, so if you have channels in your Slack account and you submit something in the Caspio side, that will be submitted to Slack as well. Okay, so I did one of those. I also showed you inside um, that live stream how when you get a Facebook message, how that Facebook message is submitted into your Caspio table. And the last example that I used is a Zapier translate. So when you submit something using a Caspio form, we are automatically translating that into Spanish and storing that information into a different table. So we looked at three different examples, but Zapier allows you to connect to over 3,000 different solutions out there. So um, hopefully, uh, Moises, that might actually um, solve some of the uh, REST um, API questions that you might have. But if you want to see a more technical demo, we might consider that in the future live stream. Okay. We'll have to prep for that one, though. Uh, let me see. So the Google API works on our apps using Caspio generated code. Yes, correct. So once that code is generated from Caspio, inside the code, it's going to ask you to provide your own Google API. So you have to have a Google account. You have to create your API on the Google side. They're going to give that information to you. But in order for the API to work, you have to provide your billing info. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So. Google provides you uh, ability to make a couple of free requests using that Google API, but they still require billing info. In case you exceed those requests, they need to charge you a small monthly fee or a small fee for those um, overages, basically. Okay, But your Google API will work with the Caspio generated code quite easily. Okay. Uh, let me say, let me take a look at my other question that I have here. By the way, we also have a few extensions available from our professional services team for location services in case you guys are interested in having like an address autocomplete, which checks against uh, Google Places API. They have a database of all of the valid addresses. So on the submission form, if you're submitting the form, okay, and you put your address, you can have a uh, autocomplete here to show you the available address from their database. So it's more verified. It's more of a valid address, right? So as you're typing it in, it's going to show you a list of addresses underneath and you can select the verified one just in case you don't want somebody to submit a wrong address and then you have to edit the address later on. So that's one extension that we provide. And the other one is to list, list view with maps, which basically in the list view, you can have a, its own map for each record. And when you're looking at the list view, it actually shows you the pin just for that location or that address. Today, we looked at one map that plots all the pins onto a map. But if you wanted to have a separate map for each record in your table, you can do things like that as well. 
All right, let's see what other questions I'm getting. This is actually very good, let's see. Uh, let's see, so your live stream trainings will help me launch our program and today's, along with the future live streams, are simply allowing us to pull away from others. Huge thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you so much, Stability and family. I appreciate the feedback. Your feedback is always welcome. You don't have to, but I really do appreciate you uh, submitting your feedback. As long as you guys keep coming back to these live streams, there's no reason to cancel them. We're going to have these weekly and then... Like I said, next Monday, we're going to do something on triggers. So we're going to look at some popular examples. And I don't think anyone wants to miss that because triggers are very powerful. They allow you to automate a lot of business procedures on the back-end side. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Now, thank you so much for sharing. Is there a way to add a Google Calendar to intake forms? Google Calendar to intake forms. Uh, theoretically, I think there is. I haven't done that before. But maybe I can do some investigating. Do me a favor. Who did this come from? Lily, I think. Yeah, Lily. Lily, do me a favor. Just submit that request to my email. Here's my email in the chat window, okay? Submit, send me an email, and maybe I can put that in the, in the funnel for, for the live stream in the future, okay? And I can let you know when it's going to be available, uh, when we're going to have that live stream so that you make sure you don't miss that, okay? So just send me an email. We do take requests. So if you guys would like to see something in the live streams, definitely let me know, and we can try to include that. I've already planned out a few live streams ahead of time, so we have at least a month and a half of live streams uh, planned because we have to build the content for the live streams. So, uh, But that doesn't mean that we can't. If it's something that I can include in one of the planned live streams, I will. Okay, And maybe it's something that I already have planned, and I'll let you know. Okay, uh, we can share REST API code. Oh, hey, David. <laughs> Good to see you, Dave. Um, will there be any live streams showing how to, be, how to do encrypted email using Caspio? How to do encrypted email using Caspio? I haven't planned anything for that yet. Um, but if you want to send me maybe a workflow on what you're thinking, um, Scott, let me know. Uh, maybe we can uh, try to figure out a way to do that, and I'll let you know if there are any shortcomings or if we can actually include that in the live stream. Because in the live stream, we try to focus a lot on standard features uh, within the platform. If it's something a little bit too custom where it requires some back-end design as well and customization, we might not be able to include that in the live stream. But I will let you know the technical part of that, and if it's something that we, we can include or cannot include. Just shoot me an email, okay? I might be doing a happy dance if this is... <laughs> Thank you, I love the training like this. Okay, perfect, Lily, no problem. Okay, glad you're enjoying the live streams. Uh, just, again, send me an email so that it's... Um, so that I don't forget. Uh, let's see, so we did a Calendly, which synchronizes with Google Calendar. Okay. That's a good idea, too, actually, with Calendly, since they do have that integration, too, you can connect with the Google Calendar. I might be able to do some... I know I mentioned before that I was going to do another session on Zapier, uh, but let me see if... Let me just take a look at one. Okay. So let me go to Zapier real quick. And how do I look for... Okay, so Google, so they do have a Google Calendar integration. So maybe if you submit the form uh, on Caspio side, you can have that populate on a Google Calendar, something like that. But send me an email with the requirements for the Google Calendar integration, and I'll take a look at it. Because Caspio does have a calendar as well, calendar data page, so you might be able to just use the Caspia data page as opposed to the Google Calendar. Okay. Now, I know that the Google Calendar is slightly more sophisticated than our calendar, so they have a lot more features built in. So that might be the reason why you want to use that instead. But, yeah, just let me know uh, the requirements. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this. Yeah, we added Google Calendar to intake forms. Yeah, I just need to know the extent of that. 
integration and what you're hoping to do with Google Calendars. And then hopefully we can have you do the happy dance afterwards once we get it all working correctly. <laughs> all right. Let me know if there are any more questions before we close today's live stream. Thank you guys so much for attending. I really, again, I really appreciate you guys coming back to these live streams. We're hoping to build this community so that everyone can interact and provide uh, resources to other people and we can all work together to learning how to use the platform efficiently so that we can build our own applications and have them function the way they're supposed to. And I think next, next live stream will be very good, you know, with the, with the triggers. I'm looking forward to that one. Because for me, even these live streams, I don't spend nearly as much time inside the platform as I used to. So even for me, these live streams are a refresher because I need to build the content for the live stream. And even with the Google API, I had to learn that it's no longer free. A few years ago, the last time I did the integration, it was completely free. But now they ask for the billing info in order for it to work correctly. David, thank you so much as well. Good to hear from you as well. You know, David is one of our... Um, long-term customers. He's been with Caspio for a long time, and uh, they also provide consulting services on the side. Um, so good to see you, Dave. Thanks, Barb. All right, so I will go ahead and keep the chat open. I'm going to just close the video. The chat will remain open if you guys have any more questions for a few more minutes. And then I hope to see you guys next week. Have a good day. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.